yeah, that noise of it just about sums it up. It's raining outside. Um, I have a half hour before I have to meet somebody for a project in the library, and I'm bored. So, this is take three of me trying to read something from this book, 13 Reasons Why. I'm not going to go into the whole story like I have for the past two videos I've tried to make. <laughs> um, it's basically about a girl who commits suicide, and she makes these tapes before she dies, and on each, um, and there are seven tapes, and on each side of the tape is a person, is a story, um, she tells about a person, and there are 13 in all who, um, directly or indirectly, um, influenced her into eventually taking her own life, and the book centers around Clay Jensen, who was her classmate, and I think he's reason number nine, and, um, it's just basically lis him listening to the tapes, and trying to figure out what caused her to feel this, you know, this bad to have her take her own life. And he gets upset with himself, upset with everybody who inf who was rude to her and also her, like, her, because he feels like they all could have done something to save her. So, um, I have been trying to figure out what good chapter to read, because they're all so different. But I finally decided on um, cassette 5, side B, which is person number 10, which is actually kind of funny because it, um, person number 10 is actually also another person on the tapes. Um, he's person number 1. I think his name is Justin Foley. He was her first kiss. And um, this is, I'm just going to read the, the I'm just going to read the audio, not anything else, because I am terrible at switching voices, and my voice is shot from the Pulse show last night, and also I'm exhausted, so. Uh, play button. Soon after Clay left, the couple from the couch walked into the bedroom. Actually, stumbled into the bedroom is more accurate. Remember them? I thought she was acting drunk, bumping into me as so we'd get up and leave. Unfortunately, it wasn't an act. She was smashed. Of course, I didn't actually see them come in. I was still on the floor, my back against the far side of the bed, and it was dark. Apparently the wind wants to be in this video. Her sofa buddy kept her from stumbling too hard into the nightstand, and when she rolled off the bed twice, he lifted her back on. Nice guy that he was, he kept the laughter to a minimum. I thought he would tuck her in and shut the door behind him as he left. And that would be the perfect time for my getaway. End of story. But that's not the end of the story. Because that wouldn't make for a very interesting tape, now would it? And by now I'm sure you knew it wasn't the end. Instead of leaving, he started kissing her. I know. Some of you would have easily stayed for such an amazing voyeuristic opportunity, a close encounter of the sexual kind. Even if you never saw it, at least you'd hear it. But two things kept me down on that floor. With my forehead pressed against my knees, I realized how much I must have drunk that night. And with my balance not what it should have been, excuse me, to run across the floor, floor felt a little hazardous, so that's one excuse. Excuse number two is that things seemed to be winding down up there. Not only was she drunk and clumsy, she seemed to be completely unresponsive. From what I could tell, it didn't go so much beyond kissing, and it seemed to be one-sided kissing at that. Again, nice guy that he was, he didn't take advantage of the situation. He wanted to. He tried for the longest time to get a reaction out of her. Are you still awake? Do you want me to take you to the bathroom? Are you gonna puke? This girl wasn't totally passed out. She grunted and groaned a bit. It dawned on him, finally, that she wasn't in a romantic mood and probably wouldn't be for a while. So he tucked her in and he'd check on her in a bit. Then he left. At this point, you might be wondering, who are these people? Hannah, you forgot to tell us their names. But I didn't forget. 
there's one thing I've still got. It's my memory. Which is too bad. Maybe if I forgot things once in a while, we'd all be a little bit happier. No, you'll have to wait for a name on this one. Though if you've been paying close attention, I gave you the answer a long time ago. Before I say his name out loud, this guy needs to stew a bit. To remember everything that happened in that room. And he remembers. I know he does. I would love to see his face right now. His eyes shut tight, jaw clenched, fists pulling out his hair. And to say to him, deny it. Go on. Deny that I was ever in that room. Deny that I know what you did. Or not what you did, but what you didn't do. What you allowed to happen. Rationalize why this isn't the tape you're making a return appearance on. It must be a later tape. It has to be a later tape. Oh, really? And you'd like that? A later tape would make things better? Don't bet on it. I know she wasn't your girlfriend, that you hardly ever talked to her and barely even knew her. But is that your best excuse for what happened next? Or is that your only excuse? Either way, there is no excuse. I stood up, stabilizing myself with one hand on the bed. Your shoes, the shadow of your shoes, were still visible in the light coming under the door. Because when you left that room, you took a post right outside. And I let go of the bed and started walking toward that silver, or toward that sliver of light, not sure what I'd say to you when I opened the door. But halfway there, two more shoes came into view. And I stopped. The door opened, but you pulled it back and said, No, let her rest. In that tiny burst of light, I saw a closet. Its accordion doors halfway open. Meanwhile, your friend was convincing you to let him in that room. I waited, heart pounding, trapped in the middle of the floor. The bedroom door opened again. But again, you pulled it shut and you tried to make a joke of it. Trust me, you said. She won't move. She'll just lay there. And what was his response? What was it? What was his reasoning for you to step aside and let him in that room? Do you remember? Because I do. It was the night shift. He told you he was working the night shift and had to leave in a few minutes. A few minutes. That's all he needed with her. So just relax and step aside. And that's all it took for you to let him open the door. Pathetic. I couldn't believe it. And your friend couldn't believe it either. Because when he grabbed the doorknob again, he didn't rush right in. He waited for you to protest. In that brief moment, the moment you said nothing, I fell on my knees, sick, covering my mouth with both hands. I stumbled toward the closet, tears blurring the light from the hall. And when I collapsed into the closet, a pile of jackets on the floor caught me. When the bedroom door opened, I pulled the closet door shut, and I shut my eyes tight. Blood pounded in my ears. I rocked back and forth, back and forth, beating my forehead into the pile of jackets. But with the bass pumping throughout the house, no one heard me. And with the bass thumping, no one heard him walking across the room. Walking across the room, getting on the bed, the bed springs screaming under his weight. No one heard a thing. And I could have stopped it, if I could have talked, if I could have seen, 
if I could have thought about anything, I would have opened those doors and stopped it. But I didn't. And it doesn't matter what my excuse was. That my mind was in a meltdown is no excuse. I have no excuse. I could have stopped it, end of story. But to stop it, I felt like I'd have to stop the entire world from spinning. Like things had been out of control for so long that whatever I did hardly mattered anymore. And I couldn't stand all the emotions anymore. I wanted the world to stop. To end. I don't know how many songs went by with my face buried in those jackets. The beats kept sliding from one song into another. After a while, my throat felt so scratched. So raw and burning. Had I been screaming? With my knees on the floor, I felt vibrations whenever anyone walked down the hall. And when footsteps fell within the room, several songs after he entered the room, I pressed my back against the closet wall, waiting, waiting for the closet doors to be torn open, to be yanked out of my hiding place. And then, what would he do to me then? But light from the hallway seeped into the room, into the closet, and his footsteps walked away. It was over. After all, he couldn't be late for work, could he? So what happened next? Well, I ran out of the room and straight down the hall. And that's where I saw you. Sitting in a room all by yourself. The person this whole tape revolves around. Justin Foley. Sitting on the edge of a bed with the lights turned off. There you were. Sitting there, staring at nothing. While I stood in the hallway, frozen, staring at you. We'd come a long way, Justin. From the first time I watched you slip on Cat's lawn, to my first kiss at the bottom of the slide, to now. First you started a chain of events that ruined my life. Now you were working on hers. Eventually you turned my way, the color in your face gone. Your expression, blank, and your eyes looked so exhausted. There was a pain I saw there. Justin, baby, I'm not blaming you entirely. We're in this one together. We both could have stopped it. Either one of us. We could have saved her. And I'm admitting this to you. To all of you, that girl had two chances, and both of us let her down. So why is this tape about Justin? What about the other guy? Isn't what he did worse? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. But the tapes need to be passed on, and if I sent them to him, they would stop. Think about it. He raped a girl and would leave town in a second if he knew. Well, if he knew what we knew. So what do you think of him now, Justin? Do you hate him? Your friend that raped her, is he still your friend? Yes, but why? It must be denial. It has to be. Sure, he's always had a temper. Sure, he goes through girls like used underwear. But he's always been a good friend to you. And the more you hang out with him, the more he seems like the same old guy from before, right? And if he acts like the same guy, then he couldn't possibly have done anything worse. Which means that you didn't do anything wrong either. Great! That's great news, Justin. Because if he didn't do anything wrong, and you didn't do anything wrong, then I didn't do anything wrong. And you have no idea how much I wish I didn't ruin that girl's life. 
but I did. At the very least, I helped. And so did you. No, you're right. You didn't rape her. And I didn't rape her. He did. But you and I, we let it happen. It's our fault.